In this clip, we'll learn how to use the Moto Renderer right inside of Mari to get an idea of what our textures will look like when rendered out. Okay, great. So let's say that we have finished texturing our asset and we are at the point where we are thinking about do we need to work a little bit more on them or are we ready to just send things back over to Maya to move on with our process. Now we can actually render this particular asset out right here inside of Mari without ever leaving and going back over into Maya. It's actually very, very simple. Let's come over here and we'll go up to the view menu here and we'll load the Moto Render palette right here. Now, the Moto Render is actually something that you can use right here inside of Mari without having a local copy of Moto installed. Now, we can do that sort of behind the scenes, and this palette is going to be your gateway to that render. Uh, however, if you do happen to have a copy of Moto installed, you can send this asset over to Moto as well. Um, you simply would need to come over to Settings, change the Use from Default Moto to Locally Installed Moto, and then you'll need to point Mari at the executable file for your Moto installation. However, I do not have Moto installed. We're not going to render in anything other than Mari in this clip. So let's come back over here to the render tab. In case you are wondering, there is a bake tab here. We're not going to be covering this in this clip. This is also a function of the Moto renderer here inside of Mari. You can use it to bake a number of different things like ambient occlusion, curvature, and so on. But over here in the render tab, you can see we have some presets. Typically when I'm using this, I'll just leave this set to basic, which is going to be like the default render settings inside of Modo. But Modo and its renderer works a little bit differently than what you may be used to inside of Maya using Arnold or even Mental Ray. Inside of Mari to render with our Modo renderer, we link the Mari channels up to what are called Modo effects. Now, if I jump over here to my channels palette, you can see I have three different channels we're using on this asset right now. We have our diffuse color, our normal map, and then a specular roughness channel. Now, we are using an AI standard shader, but that's okay. We can render that with the Moto Renderer. Let's just come over and click the plus sign here, and I'll go ahead and start linking these up. And we'll link up the diffuse channel over to the diffuse color, Moto Effect. And you can see that appears right here. We'll go ahead and click the plus sign again. And let's go ahead and link up the normal map to the normal effect. And we'll link that final channel, which is our spec roughness. And I'll link that up over here to just the rough channel. Okay, fantastic. So we've got all three channels linked up inside of the channel assignments here. Now, we're ready to move down into this area here. Now, this is where you need to decide, are you okay with previewing the render in sort of this small window here? Or do you actually want to render this out as a separate image file? So there's a couple of different ways we can do that. If we're okay with just a preview render, we can simply tap this preview button. But before you do, let's talk a little bit about this flattening process. So the flattening process is something that will vary based on the asset you're working with. For very complex assets, sometimes it will actually take Mari longer to flatten all those uh, different channels and layers and everything down as opposed to just previewing it in its unflattened state. This is a pretty simple asset, pretty low resolution not a whole lot of channels. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and flatten this down. Now, if you're wanting to render out a separate image file, you would use these attributes right down here. You can set things like dimensions of the image. You can set whether or not to flatten it. You can save where to save it to, and then to save out an LXO file, which is a Moto file. We won't need that inside of Maya. Let's just go ahead and tap this preview button. Now this is going to begin the process of flattening out this entire Mari project and then rendering it with Modo. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let Mari work on this for just a moment. I'm going to pause the video and I'll unpause it once we start to see some progress here.
Okay, so here we go. The process of flattening and rendering out this asset is still going on in the background, but I went ahead and unpaused the video as soon as we started to see an image appearing here inside of the preview portion of the Moto Render Palette. So you can see we still have a bit of processing left to do, but let's talk a little bit about kind of the relationship that's being established here simply by previewing what is on my Mari canvas. So we have essentially established a link here between the canvas and the render preview. And once this finishes rendering out, we'll see this, but essentially the camera now is uh, going to update based on its position around our asset. So if we begin to move the camera around, the rendered preview will eventually update. Now, obviously it is finished rendering, or at least it says it has finished, but we're still working on sort of resolving that final image. And there we go. You can see there is our final render. Now you will notice there is a high dynamic range image being used for lighting. And if I jump over here into my lights palette, you can see that this correlates right here to the environment light that I'm using. If I scroll down here, you can see I've got this image plugged in. I do have the background hidden though, so it does not show up in the canvas, which is just my personal preference, but that will still show up inside your preview render. Now, like I mentioned before, when I begin to orbit around, maybe I want to look at a different part of the asset. What you're going to notice here is uh, after a couple of moments, the preview render of our little creature here is going to update and it's going to allow me to look at the various areas. Now this render preview using the Moto Renderer is going to work whether you're using an environment light or whether you're using the default lights inside of Mari. But this can be a useful feature for sort of spot checking your textures with some real ray traced illumination inside of Mari without having to send everything over to Maya, get a scene set up, lights created, and click the render button over there. Okay, speaking of going back to Maya, let's go ahead and move on at this point to our next clip and we'll learn how we can send our asset from Mari back over to Maya using the MGO plugin.